bright and beautiful being and welcome to Gemini season and the Gemini season meditation event at Spirit Mysteries. If you don't know me, my name is Amelia and I work in Spirit Mysteries on Team Spirit and it is an honor as always to be holding sacred space with you today during a very interesting time for humanity. <laughs> and it is Gemini season, it is the season of the lovers, believe it or not, where one becomes two and two become one. And this is a kind of mysterious phrase that we're getting into already right off the bat here, right? And this, this trippy image that we have um, indicates that there is a mystery to this. We, we were talking about it briefly today and then leading you in a very special sacred meditation. Um, but there's so much more to explore. And so I invite you to open your heart, open your mind, center yourself in your beautiful body and soul and play with these ideas and receive what works and release what doesn't. <laughs> so without further ado, I would love to start with the sacred smudging to clear the air a little bit and bring a bit more of an ASMR quality to this video because we like to have fun and we like to experiment here in Spirit Mysteries. <laughs> and it is an honor as always. cleansing the space and if you have any tools as well feel free to break those out now whether that be candles sage moon water the works and put it in the comments if you do i'm very curious <laughs> all right and so with that we dive in <laughs> So Gemini season, this is the observed Gemini season of when the sun is considered to be in the sign of Gemini, which is the sign of the twins. So it's the third sign in the zodiac, and this is generally the observed season between May 21st and June 20th. So woo, happy Gemini season. And please comment below um, if you have a birthday in this time period, because I, I say this about every zodiac sign now, but Geminis are just so bubbly and fun and talkative and there's an energy to it that is just very amicable and very friendly it's that like everyone's friend energy and a level of companionship and communication and that is what gemini is all about that's why the sun's essence when you have your sun sign in a certain place um, it's just a strong, vibrant vitality kind of energy. It's not necessarily a personality, but it's the vitality in your life force. And so, shout out to all my Gemini sons, this is what I was trying to say. <laughs> so, ruled by Mercury, which is the planet in astrology of communication, expression, learning, teaching a little bit as well. Um, Gemini is all about communicating and all about learning through self-expression self-expression and self-reflection so there's this sort of give and receive quality to this this duality between self-expression and outputting information and self-reflection which is to take in information and reflect on it within so as you dance between the two within yourself it becomes so much easier to express and reflect with another person whether that is your significant other or a family member or even um, your child, because we're all reflections of each other. And we're going to talk about that more in a minute. But the more you do this, the more you'll realize you aren't just communicating. You are in communion with everyone and everything. And to get a little wordsmithy here for a bit, communicating, at least to me and in my experience and in this context, is um, usually, you know, it's exchanging information. Communion is sharing information. There's a huge difference between someone giving information and someone receiving it, and there being this sense of inner knowing. It's sort of the difference between the form of expression of speaking and the form of expression and communication of like telepathy or, or just 
knowing someone's vibe so well that you can feel when it shifts, you feel the information coming to you through the energy, through the waves, this is a sense of communion because it's something that always exists between everyone and everything. And again, we're gonna get a little deeper on this, but it is a big topic. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this um, in the comments and what communion means to you because there is religious communion and there is spiritual communion. And it's fun to see how those two overlap and play together. So this is Gemini in a nutshell. The story of Gemini, or at least the one that is most associated with it, um, is one that I interpret as the earthly self and the divine self. This um, coming together of two parts of one being. So in Greek mythology, Gemini is most often associated with a tale of two brothers, Castor and Pollux. You might recognize these names as constellations and stars because they are, as you can see here in this picture. So while Castor is mortal and human, Pollux is immortal and they both share a mother and Pollux's dad was Zeus, I believe. Um, so you know how it goes. If you're familiar with Greek mythology, then you know that Zeus is kind of like that. <laughs> Having all kinds of children, halfling babies all over the place. So Pollux was one of these immortal babies, which meant he had spiritual power and he also was in communion constantly with Zeus his father. So when Castor dies in battle, Pollux splits his divinity after correspondence with Zeus, of course, and asking him for this. He asks and sacrifices his divinity to share his immortality with his brother so that they both rise to the stars as, as constellations. So this is why the constellation Gemini is connected at the shoulders. There is this brotherly love vibration to it, this companionship that started from birth in a way. Um, and it's interesting because the tale implies that the, their brothers are not originally twins. And yet the two become one upon death or upon rebirth or upon transformation. And so we already have this, this is why I said two becomes one, because that is the energy of Gemini. It is two unifying into the self, the um, mortal and human part of us, the earthly self, which would be represented by Castor, and then the divine self, which sort of is living within the, um, living within the earthly self. So already you see this duality play out like so prominently, and it's oftentimes why Gemini is associated with um, two-facedness. <laughs> but but here there's such a there's an elevated version here. This story is much more um, gentle and brotherly and uh, even uh, fraternal. That's the word, um, and so so it is. <laughs> So it's fun to play with this, this idea, and with this story, which can teach us a lot about ourselves and our relationship with ourselves, as well as um, the, the necessity for sacrifice at times, because Pollux sacrifices his divinity to allow Castor to live with him forever in the stars, and, and there's an equality there as well to the self. The earthly self is not lower than the divine self. It may be lower in vibration or denser, you know, in its light form, but essentially even the most dense earthly matter is just very, 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 very condensed divinity, according to most spiritual practices and according to what we talk about here. And of course, something that astrology touches very much on. So without diving in too deep to that, <laughs> Welcome to the season of the lovers. I already said it, but this is just a little more background as to why we are calling it the season of the lovers Because the story of Gemini is the brothers. So that might seem a little strange um, but this was chosen very uh, Intentionally because we often in this society see the word lover to be romantic We see it to imply, you know, weddings and marriage and um, crushes and boyfriends, girlfriends, all that stuff, significant others. And what I invite us to play with, really truly just play with here, is when we consider going from duality to harmony to unity, that applies within ourselves. And that means that the way to do that 
typically. <laughs> the way to create inner harmony is often through love, and through acts of love, and acts of self-love even, um, like forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, these very difficult and yet very simple acts that enact the innate love that you are, that you were born with. And there is, overall, we all have these inner dualities to us, and typically they are described as feminine and masculine, or yin and yang. And feminine is typically seen as um, cold, dark, um, specifically yin is um, receptive, and then masculine energy is more output. It is fire, air, that kind of essence. And you need both of these to return back to harmony and to unity. Um, it's the same way that you need multiple notes in a song to create a harmony, to create a chord even. So these things we are realizing here is that one, the term lovers does not just apply to um, romantic relationships. It applies to the love that binds our masculine and our feminine energies, these two sides of us. You could also consider it as your two, the two sides of your brain, the left brain and the right brain. Um, we are harmonizing them. We're finding space for a middle path, a, a more centered perspective. And our community, our society needs that now more than ever, I believe. And this is what the essence of the lovers is really about, is bringing things together into harmony. And suffice to say, um, you know, you can be a lover without having a lover. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> if you are a lover, what is a lover really? It's just someone who loves, yeah? And so at a very basic level, we can get rid of all the expectations and the tension that we might be feeling about romantic relationships and what it means to have a companion and all of that because at the end of the day, at the end of the life, or lifetime, I should say, you are your own lover, and you always will be. And so this, the one of my most sacred intentions during this event and during this upcoming meditation is to give you a taste of that feeling of inner love and peace and harmony within yourself. Because it's much closer than you think and you're much more capable than you know. To boost our morale with all of this energy, I included um, a picture of the patch tarot card, The Lovers, because it would not be a Spirit Mysteries video without referencing patch tarot. <laughs> and I will say my studies in tarot are still deepening ever more so, but this card always comes up for me when I least expect it. <laughs> In other words, it comes up for me when I'm not even really thinking about romance or relationships or anything like that. It comes up for me when I have inner discord, when I can feel my inner polarities, my inner dualities, um, just butting heads, <laughs> there being tension, and rather than there being harmony, where two different notes are able to create a beautiful chord, there is this feeling of segmentation in myself and a resistance um, for example, I have always had trouble trusting my body and feeling safe in my body and so it has created a bit of a schism between my mind or my awareness and my body and I'm actively healing that right now. And that is similar to the story of Gemini. The essence of this season is the earthly self and the divine self are essentially one and the same. And so by bringing yourself together with this sacred marriage, you have the divine family coming together. It's not even just the queen and the king, right? It's the prince and the princess as well. And all of their fleet of support, the spiritual angelic support that comes through when people honor each other's differences and come together. Likewise, the people inside of you, your inner selves, acknowledge the contrast. You acknowledge, okay, I've got light and shadow in me and I can blend that. And that, that's what allows me to be this way, actually, is I am light and shadow. Or as Thoth says, um, light wrapped in a veil of night. And it's true. So how can, we, how can we swaddle ourselves to be wrapped in this night a little more comfortably to allow some breathing room for the sacred family within us to just play together, to live, to love, to be in your fullness? Marriage, it's just another word for bringing things together. And this is what we're doing. We're bringing all the parts of you together in a present, 
a loving way. So you know I had to make a note about this. <laughs> I couldn't not talk about this because it's just such an, it's a very talked about subject in um, any spiritual community. If you've heard of twin flames or soulmates, then you're probably familiar with the concept, which is that each soul has a counterpart that it was split from and is destined to reunite with. I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with soulmates and twin flames is sort of a newer term but it comes from the interpretation in um, ancient philosophy about soulmates. So oftentimes this kind of relationship is depicted as romantic and super intense or super volatile, which expedites spiritual learning and evolution. And that's sort of why um, this whole topic in the new age movement is and can be very toxic because it, when held in tandem with spiritual bypassing or um, being an armchair spiritualist, if you will, where you sort of take everything in academically, but you don't fully apply it to your life, there is a disconnect here because you might find yourself in a rough relationship and be so attached to the, the desire and the pleasure of it that you, and that could be romantic or not, um, that you keep torturing yourself essentially and not seeing the deeper pattern, the deeper learning of this intense relationship. And this happens because twin flames do not have to be romantic. And this is getting more talked about too as well as we continue to work with this kind of energy, this kind of soul companion energy, because it really is just the collective playing again. So it's, there's not anything wrong with these terms. Um, they're just, there has been um, a cultural curiosity happening with these terms that I have, I just wanted to make a note on. But what if our idea of soulmates and twin flames, like what if even all that playing is still kind of limited in the sense that it focuses on these romantic relationships? Gemini is inviting us to play with this idea that we are all each other's soulmates in a way. Since we all came from one spirit, to that same spirit we shall return. So there's this feeling that, you know, God has created a geometry. And because it is a geometry, you know, a sacred geometry, a sacred shape, we're all connected by the lines and the curves and the flows. There is no beginning and no end. And so likewise, although we may feel different um, uh, as a different person, we are all one humanity. We are all one planet people. And you can see that as like a macro organism of sorts of us, whether it's humanity as a race or whether it's like spirit as spirit. And then likewise, you have dualities inside of you as an individual body, as this avatar that you are. And these dualities are destined to harmonize and unify within you. I know at times it may seem like that's impossible. It may seem like these two things are so diametrically opposed, but oftentimes when it comes to our own inner geometries, as well as the collective geometry. It really can be as simple as breathing to shift your patterns, to shift your geometries. It, it takes the littlest shifts, um, such as breathing deeper or such as, I wanna say taking a cold shower. These are just things I do to shift my vibration. But within ourselves, when we start to see these dualities, not as in war with each other, but in a dance, then the more they dance together and the more we play with them and we allow them to be, something magical happens. The lines start to blur and you start to not be able to tell the difference between masculine and feminine energy. And this is something else that I am very passionate about and is very important to discuss right now is what it means to be masculine and what it means to be feminine, because that's another idea in the society that has been warped, but we'll save that for another time. Just play with these ideas, let them run through you and know that even if you don't believe that these like dualities within you can harmonize, entertain the possibility and see how your life would shift with this kind of inner peace and acceptance between the two, almost like having an inner dialogue with your different personas. <laughs> All of this and so much more is why our Gemini season theme of the month is divine union <laughs> and i'm so honored to be announcing this 
Um, it is just an absolutely beautiful, miraculous time to be alive. And I want to say that again, even if you have been going through a hard time, even if you have been feeling this split, it is in this split and this segmentation that we find our way back into into unity. So divine union, you can see it a couple different ways. In some interpretations, people would say, oh, you're, you're coming into union with the divine. And for me, it is, it is like we were talking about earlier, the divine self coming into union with the earthly self and there being a full acknowledgement and alignment of wills and alignment of loves too. I got this download from Spirit the other day that God's will is God's love. And it was just so revolutionary and yet so simple. And this is this is the power of the lovers. This is the power of divine union is when there is consent, like full body consent between the body and the soul and God, there is this absolutely beautiful sacred matrix that is created that can be shifted towards healing. And Likewise, you can think of this in a cosmic way, but you can also think of it within you and your inner polarities, your inner dualities coming together in divine union. And I'm very excited to be celebrating this with you. We're going to be, um, you know, changing up the graphics in a little bit and giving you some special updates. We have new things happening almost every week now, which is really cool. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of the chit chat about this and what it means to you. And now we step into a ethereal state, a peaceful state. We step into our divine union meditation. So if you're not already, I invite you to get comfortable and simply surrender to cosmic love and trust that I will be your guide for these few minutes while we explore your inner dualities and your divine and your earthly selves. You can sit in a meditative posture. I invite you to now get comfortable into your meditative posture, whether that's sitting up or lying down. However you want to be sitting, being fully you, fully present now. And just breathe deep into your body and find a restful, comfortable place where you can let your shoulders fall, your hips relax, all your muscles, bones, joints surrendering slowly, slowly but surely into a state of calm. And to do this, it helps to deepen your breath. So just play with this now and see how deep you can breathe, how slowly you can inhale in whatever way feels comfortable to you. And then release your breath and let your exhale be that which softens your muscles, softens your muscles, softens your energy brings you into a state of peace. Continue deepening your breath, feeling your belly stretch, your lungs inflate like sacred air, and then breathe out fully. And if you haven't already, I invite you to close your eyes. Close your eyes and breathe. And trust that what you are about to see is exactly perfect for you to see. It is safe in this space. For everywhere you go is a sacred space because you are in it. Breathe into this knowing now as you begin to imagine yourself walking 
walking through a beautiful, ornate hallway. It is a hallway that, although it looks decorative and royal, it seems familiar to you somehow. It pulls at your heart and your chest, keeping you walking forward. You notice the beauty in the walls, the soothing vibration of your feet patting softly against the floor. The lighting is just right. And as you continue to walk, you notice at the very end of this hallway, a mirror a sacred mirror that takes up the entire wall at the end of the hall. And it's lit by golden torches with emeralds embedded in their handles. And in the reflection of the mirror, you can just make out your reflection, yourself. When you are ready, take another deep, deep breath and walk towards this mirror. As you get closer, you hear the crickle crackle of the torches of the firelight. You see more details of yourself. You notice your hair, your eyes, nose, mouth, ears, your beautiful, beautiful skin, and the clothes you wear. a moment now as you stand directly in front of this mirror to take yourself in. To gaze into your own eyes and if that is difficult for you then take another full body scan and notice what you're wearing. Notice how your body looks or how it doesn't look. And see if you can let go of the attachment to needing to look a certain way. We often look into mirrors because we feel that we are meant to look a certain way and looking in the reflection somehow will help us adjust, help us create better beauty if there was such a thing. But lucky for you, you are naturally beautiful. You are naturally sacred and special and unique. And so although in this reflection, there may be parts of you that you don't like, but that other people don't like, or that you have been told, lied to, that you are not beautiful, hmm. it is dissolving now. And the more you look at yourself in the mirror, the more you see you. Not the you that everyone thinks you are. Not the you that you have created. But the version of you that is most in resonance with your soul's highest expression. And what does that look like? Truly, I ask because it is all up to you. Take yourself in now and notice as the imperfections or perceived flaws that you may have found troubling earlier, notice how they shift. 
or how your perspective of them shifts and see your divine self leak through slowly. Slowly but surely, your reflection is emanating a soft glow. I'll let you continue to gaze, whether it's in your own eyes or over your own body, to watch this reflection of you evolve, to see your divinity shining through in its fullness. On your next inhale, the glow that you are emanating becomes even brighter. And feel free to play with this, play with your reflection. As you move your hands and your body, as you sway side to side or make a peace sign, notice if your reflection does the same. No matter what, it's perfect. Play with this, this version of you, this reflection. and see if you can dance. See if you can dance with them, whether you are moving in synchronization or not. Play with this movement and watch as your reflection moves with you and without you back and forth, ebb and flow, until you twirl around and you notice that the entire hallway is full of mirrors, full of different reflections of you. Some you recognize, some you don't. There's no need to get stuck on the details. But in its fullness, you are aware of just how many reflected versions there are of you. And each one moves differently. Each one speaks differently, looks differently. And it's perfect. 
because somehow deep down you still know that all of these reflections are parts of you, expressions of yourself. And for a moment, you feel a soft, gentle hand on your shoulder. And you turn around and you face that first reflection and their smile is radiant. You can't help but mirror it. And now as you take another deep, deep breath, feeling bolstered with courage and compassion by the loving, sacred gaze of your own reflection, you turn back and you walk down the hall up the way you came. And with every step, each one of those reflections dissolves and emerges fully into you. One by one, each mirror reveals another you and each you becomes one you. Breathe deep into this knowing and walk now at the end of this tunnel toward your perfect paradise, whatever that may be for you. There is an open door at the end of this hallway. There is an open window of opportunity and possibility that you didn't really see before. And as you continue to breathe on your next inhale, feel all of the light from all of your divine selves, all of your self angels coming into your heart. Breathe into your heart now. If you feel called, you can press your hands against your sternum and feel the beat, the pulse, the rhythm of your love, the rhythm, the song, of your divine union. When you're ready, return to your body in this present time and space. And give your heart chakra a little gentle squeeze. You may also feel called to place your hands together in prayer position. Wiggle your fingers, your toes. Sway a little if you weren't already and give yourself a full hug. Just wrap your arms as much as you can around yourself and give your body a hug back into this space, back into this knowing, bringing with you which you received and conjured from within. Bring it here now to your heart and to your body in its fullness and keep breathing deep bright and beautiful. Keep breathing deep. Because with every breath, you welcome more and more of yourselves back into your center, 
You bring more of your scattered energy back into harmony. And you play the songs of life. You play the song of you, which has its chords, has its moments of discord even. And yet you can attune every instrument. You can shift yourself and your vibration into these states where these parts of you that seemed so different come together in a juicy and glorious way. The same way two triangles overlap to create a Merkaba. Two pyramids, rather, but you get the gist in 2D. <laughs> And on that note, if you enjoyed this meditation and you'd like to go deeper, I highly, highly recommend mirror gazing, eye gazing with yourself in the mirror. It is possibly the most profound self-love healing method that I have ever discovered. <laughs> um, and it can be rather scary. So if you, if you only can do a few seconds or maybe like for a couple minutes when you brush your teeth. I like to do that sometimes. Um, it is a very powerful thing and even the smallest effort helps and at least allows you to become aware of your eyes, aware of yourself. Because again, we often look into mirrors to find imperfections. Likewise, we look at other people who are our mirrors and we look for imperfections. We look for things to fix. It is the left brain's nature to do so. But by eye gazing, you move through this, this duality consciousness, this mindset that there has to be good or bad, black or white, etc. And you see through that veil and into a space where you are one. Through your own eyes, your own two eyes, you can see one eye. And so if you really want it to be powerful, um, you can play with the focusing of your eyes. Be careful, of course, especially if you have any ocular um, situations <laughs> or triggers that might, you know, sensitive eyes. Um, but eye gazing with yourself for one, and then also unfocusing and focusing your eyes to reach your third eye, to, to let those two middle eyes overlap and to see your third eye, see this one knowing within you. This is your true self. This is your true consciousness. And it's really beautiful to witness with your own eyes. So again, if you'd like to go deeper, I highly recommend doing that. And just like, you know, playing your most soothing music, even perhaps a romantic one, if you want to tap into that aspect of you, because truly all relationships, whether they seem external or not, also exist within us. And we have these internal relationships, these internal families of mother, daughter, father, son, <laughs> um, that create harmony when there's healing, when there's love, compassion, and forgiveness between all of those. And again, this is just the beginning. You've opened the sacred door of possibilities, and it's an honor to be here to guide you in this harmony towards this space, because it is not easy to learn the dance of life or the dance of the self, but it can be so much more fun than we give it credit for. So, thanks be. And I'd love to know your experience, so feel free to share your meditation experience in the comments and I will take a look and I was going to say pick my favorites, but really I'm sure they'll all be my favorites. Um, I love hearing about just everyone's experience with the meditations, whether it's something I do or something else someone else does. The abilities to find a new spiritual practice are limitless. The, and the practices, I should say, are limitless. You can play with anything and you can make any act sacred with intention and attention and love. So thank you for being here doing that with me and us as always. Thank you. Thank you for simply being. I truly mean this from the bottom of my heart and from the hearts of everyone on Team Spirit. Um, thank you for creating harmony with us. It really is truly an honor. And... Happy Gemini season, happy birthday, and blessed a solar return to you Gemini suns, and let's keep chatting in the community about not just divine union, but everything, all of the miracles and all of the struggles that are happening for you right now. It really is important to talk about these things, especially if we have hid them and kept them hidden for so long. Hence the 
revelation of the mysteries. <laughs> so I will see you guys again very soon and I love you. I trust you. I value you. I honor you. Let's create heaven on earth, my guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>